Hello and welcome back to our series for vendor compliance within Sage Intact. So in our last video, we actually just turned on the subscription and applied the permissions to our role for vendor compliance. And the next step in the process is within your purchasing module under the setup tab, you should see this vendor compliance section now. And you have your compliance definitions and your compliance types. So your compliance types are based off of your de definition. So that is where we will begin. I am going to press the little plus button beside it to bring me right into the definition. So if I come in here then under my compliance category, if I drop that down, I can see there's three different options. I can do insurance, miscellaneous or lien waiver. So there are the three categories by which we can track compliance in the system. And for the purposes of this video, I am going to select insurance. I'm going to keep this really simple and I'm going to make my definition ID insurance and I'm going to be consistent and keep my name the same. I'm not even going to put a description in because I think it's pretty self-explanatory and my status is going to remain active. In my generation rules, then I have the option to track by either vendor or primary document. So I will give you both scenarios. Say you want to track by vendor and you select automatic by type. So you might do something simple like my vendor type of subcontract and my vendor type of supplier. If I set up a vendor or indeed if I go in and I edit a vendor and I have the vendor type of subcontractor supplier, I want to track and make sure that they have valid insurance before I pay them. So that's a simple way that you could do it. You could also break it out, make it a little bit more detailed and say like, maybe you have your drywall guys, your electric, electrical guys and your masonry guys. I don't know how you split out your vendor types, but that's another way that you could do it, obviously. And that would track just by the vendor. And if the vendor is out of compliance, if the insurance cert is expired, then your AP payments will flag. So the other way that you can do it then is by primary document. So this is based off your transaction definitions. And let's say, for example, you have a vendor, but they have multiple different jobs for you. And for each one of those jobs, you need to maintain a separate set of certificates of insurance, which is absolutely typical. So in that case, you would track by the transaction definition of subcontract, or even maybe you would do purchase order. I don't know. So every time you put in a subcontract for that vendor, it's going to want an expiration date for the insurance certificate related to that subcontract. So there are the two different ways that you can track and you can also set up one specifically, say, for vendors and say it's for your suppliers just and then you can have another definition based off your primary document and you can do it for your subcontracts and your purchase orders. In your validation rules, then you have no, no option to change this because when it is insurance, it's always validated against your expiration date. And in your notifications, then you have the option of what you want the system to do when your vendor or your transaction definition are out of compliance. So if they're not in compliance, then do you want a, an error, a warning, or would you like to ignore? And I have it set as error. So that is just some examples of how you could set up for your insurance compliance category. This is just the definition. And in the next video, we're going to go through the compliance types. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to save, obviously, when you put the information in. And I'll see you in the next video.